Hey YouTube, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by. This is Matthew with the Counselor's Guild and today I'm presenting another book review. This one, The Boy Crisis by Will Warren Farrell and John Gray. First, let's talk about the authors. Warren Farrell has a PhD, doctorate degree in political science from the University of California. I don't usually do books uh, from political scientists. They usually stick to counseling, therapy, psychology. Um, but I felt the need to read this book. I thought it was very well done. Um, he did get an honorary doctorate in the psychology from Montclair University. Um, and I think the boy crisis is in the psychology wheelhouse. So I feel like it's appropriate for, for this channel to review. Uh, he, off, he is also the author of Why Men Are the Way They Are and The Myth of Male Power. He's been elected three times to the Board of Directors of the National Organization for Women in New York City and currently trying to create a national organization for men. Uh, I don't know if he's done that yet. Uh, he's working on it. Uh, and he's been an activist for second, fade, second wave feminism in the 60s. John Gray, PhD, bachelor's and master's degree in creative intelligence, not sure what that is, and unaccredited PhD degree by correspondence in 1982 uh, from Columbia Pacific University. He's the author of Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. He's a personal relationship therapist, and he has Mars and Venus counseling centers where he trains therapists in his Mars and Venus technique. Okay, So book characteristics is 496 pages. Uh, 398 pages are actually the book. Uh, there's two appendices, there's some acknowledgments, and there's about 80 pages of endnotes, which are his references. Uh, there's six parts to the book. There's 32 chapters and a conclusion. It was uh, written in 2018 by Ben Bella Books, or published by Ben Bella Books. It's car uh, categorized as a parenting book, and it sells for $17.95. Uh, whoops. <laughs> Let me go forward. Um, so in this presentation, I will be going over the different parts. Each part I go over is really just a tip of the iceberg for that part. There is so much more to this book than what I could present in this uh, review, uh, just because I don't want to do an hour, two hour long video on it. Um, but we'll start with part one. Is there really a boy crisis? Um, so the book goes over so many different, um, I guess, disparate, uh, discrepancies, not discrepancies. Um, basically, men uh, kind of outranking the women in anything and everything that involves, um, you know, pain, suffering, um, you know, what have you. Men are always the ones that seem to get the short end of the stick. Uh, so incarceration rates, men truly um, um, have a higher incarceration, incarceration rate. Uh, there's a 700% increase, this is from the book, since 1993. Okay, men are perpetrators and victims of murder, more murder and suicide, violent crimes, um, robberies, you, you know, whatever you, crime you can think of, men are usually more the perpetrator and the victim of. Uh, physical health uh, was another um, point. I think it was another chapter in that part. Um, uh, we tend to, men, men and boys tend to take jobs that put their lives at risk. Um, whether it's, you know, police, electrician, truck driver, tend to, um, more men and boys tend to take those types of jobs. We tend to put our health uh, below you know our job uh, economic health outsourcing has taken many uh has taken many jobs by machines um, so men are having a kind of competing with not just outsourcing to other countries but also you know the the ai the technology that's that's keeps improving and can take over uh, your job you know i think mcdonald's is <laughs> gonna probably be um people is you know soon um, I know I can already order my food at a McDonald's I can already check out 
check myself out at Walmart, which I do take advantage of. I much prefer myself to do it. Um, so there's a lot of jobs that men are used to doing just you know, don't need them anymore. You know, maybe construction. You know, with technology, it's probably a lot easier, faster, and safer using technology than using man. Um, so let's see. So economic health. That's uh, that part. And then education. Education. Boys. This is from the book. Boys are 50% more likely than girls to fail to meet basic proficiency in any of the three core subjects. Of reading math and science reading is a core skill that boys are doing the worst and so is there really a boy crisis from what I've read from that book from what they present eh, you'd have to be blind not to be okay um, and and this quote at the bottom kind of describes why I think we the general population aren't really looking at it as a crisis we're not really paying attention to uh, the boy crisis. And Pharaoh quote, I quote Pharaoh here, it says, because of much of our history, blindness to boys' death is the way we, as a, society, uh, as a society, have survived. When our very survival is dependent on our son's willingness to die, sensitivity to the death and suffering of boys and men is in competition with our survival instinct. The detachment creates what I call, what Pharaoh calls, the gender sensitivity gap. Caring less about a boy dying than a girl. Okay, so if we have, and I and I put down internalized into the scheme of what a man is supposed to be. Um, so if all these bad things are happening to men, we're not paying attention to it because we have this built-in, um, I guess, schema. What I put it uh, of men. Uh, that, that's just their their role. You know, they're supposed to take those high-risk jobs. They're supposed to put their lives on the line. Uh, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, you know. Uh, I don't want to pay attention to any of that suffering, you know, because society um, survives based on them putting their lives up, uh, putting their health uh, at risk. So when we start focusing on the boy crisis, when we start looking at all the statistics, um, I think what we're going to find is that we are living this cushy lifestyle on the deaths and uh, suffering of men. Uh, and we don't want to look at that. We don't want to see that. We want to focus on the 5% of men that are successful and wealthy and the top CEOs, you know. Uh, we want to focus on that. We're not focusing on 90% of men who are having to deal with uh, one, 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 two, three, or four, maybe all these issues. And this goes into part two, and uh, why the boy crisis isn't your fault, because it's been internalized. This is just what men do. That's what they're made for. Um, and it's not really anyone's fault. We're just, I mean, if you look, you know, if you go way back, you know, that's what men did. We went out, we fought, we, we, we hunted, we did all that dangerous stuff, you know. We're still doing it today. So means of survival. Um, Means of survival um, has improved, right, greatly. Women can now survive on their own. They don't need no man, right? Um, they can work. They can get education. They can get a good job, take care of themselves. They don't need a man. So this led to a dad deprivation from what War uh, Warren said because, you know, divorce rates skyrocketed because women don't need, don't depend on a man as the breadwinner, okay? Um, women are free from their dependencies, uh, but but not men. You know, Pharaoh uh, uh, talks about how he, uh, well not he, but we have liberated women, you know, from their 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 uh, role, you know, housewife, caretaker, you know, what have you, but not men. We haven't liberated ourselves from that role of of warrior, of hunter, of of putting our lives at stake for the betterment of society. Um, we're, st we're still expected to do that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> sense of purpose. Uh, boys are experiencing a purpose void due to not being the sole breadwinner, and we are living in a world that is not in need of warriors. Farrell talks about how you can 
grew up, uh, you know, your entire life, not have to experience war. You know, we have a, I mean, in the U.S., we have a voluntary, voluntary army. Um, you know, forced into having to go into those, um, but we're not really in need of them. You know, we kind of have it good. You know, men kind of work themselves out of their job. Um, with technology, with with uh, you know, with everything, the, everything we build. Uh, the last part, well, not the last part, but uh, the third part here is this heroic intelligence versus health intelligence. Uh, and I quote Farrell here, um, just because he can say it so much better than I can. It says here the social bribes designed to prepare boys to be heroes. For example, big boys don't cry, and when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. You know, if you're a boy or a man, I'm sure you've heard that or at least felt that growing up. Without support system to develop physical and emotional health intelligence, boys externalize and act out their fear of not measuring up with drugs, drinking, delinquency, or by emotionally withdrawing. The damage to self and others from acting out distracts parents and teachers from the underlying depression, and boys' emotional withdrawal inhibits emotional support. So, when we had no purpose, and I think purpose might be the next part, but when we have no purpose, we tend to become depressed, right? Life is meaningless. Um, I don't have a family to protect, or I don't have a, people depending on me, you know. Um, uh, so, what do we do? Uh, Pharaoh uh, talks about, and he, he says, I think this is for later in the book, but he talks about, how we need to teach boys to, to I mean, not be like, um, like self-centered, but think about you know your interests and, and what do you want to live life for? You know what's important to you and going after that. Um, you're no longer um, attached to your role that you were given a long time ago. <clears throat> uh, so heroic intelligence versus health intelligence. Heroic intelligence is that old style of, you know, put myself uh, in front of danger to protect the society. Health intelligence is, well, wait a second here. I don't want to die. Um, you know, why do I have to do it? You know, you know, putting yourself first kind of thing. At least that's what I got from it. But it's not in like a self-centered way, like, oh, only care about yourself. It's, you know, thinking about your health and safety and, you know, what's good for you. Um, if joining the Army, putting yourself on the line, if that's important to you, if that's something that you care about, then go go do it. You know, but don't feel like you have to do it. I think that's the difference. Um, okay, so heroic intelligence versus health intelligence. Uh, we'll go on more into that later. And then uh, he he talks about ADHD during this part. I don't want to go into that right now because he has a whole part dedicated to ADHD. Okay. <clears throat> so part three, the purpose void. The, per the path of uh, the purpose generation gap. Uh, when we pursue what we believe gives us meaning, it gives us life. So joining the military, going into a, a combat MOS, if that's something that gives your life meaning, that's what you've been setting out to do, that's what I you know, planned on doing, go do it. You know, but make sure it's your choice and you're not doing it for somebody else. Uh, exploring with your son ways he can serve by finding a purpose larger than himself. Always important. The alternative is a purpose void, often triggering a failure to launch depression and self-disgust. Social bribes uh, are like women, dad, mom, media, and the military. Again, you're doing it for yourself. You're not doing it because, oh, you think you know, a woman's going to like you if you do. Uh, you're not doing it because you're trying to live up to your dad's expectations or your mom's expectations. Uh, you're not doing it because, oh, you know, Captain America is my idol or whatever. Uh, and the military, you're not doing it because, you know, you're... you're you're being forced to. It's something you choose to do. <clears throat> These are the social bribes that, and this is by Farrell. All the quotes is by Farrell. Uh, if your son absorbs them before the point where he's old enough and mature enough to understand their purpose, can make your son a slave to the safety of others with little regard for the safety of himself. That's the heroic intelligence. We needed that a long time ago. We don't need that now. Okay? And men have got to get out of that role. Okay, we have to free ourselves from that way of thinking. Okay. Um, 
And in our collective unconscious, we know that the more our sons buy into these social bribes, the more our homes and our homeland are protected. We have developed an unconscious investment in social bribes that put our sons in jeopardy so we may live or live better. Okay. Um, that by Warren Farrell. Um, yeah, that's all I'll say about that. Uh, the error of the multi-option mom and the no-option dad. Do women respect men who fill the house dad role? Um, I can imagine some women do, um, but I also can see how some women won't or don't. Um, women, um, I don't know, I think if they're married, maybe. Um, if that's the plan, you know, if the wife, you know, if they, she got the... Um, graduate degree or doctor or something like that she got a really good career you know dad would be like oh you know I'll stay home you know but do the women respect that you know women like um, men that uh, can take care of them hmm I don't know I didn't really think about that but but anyway uh, the no option dad is I don't have an option you know Mom can get a job, or she can be a housewife. She has options. Dad, you gotta get a job, you know, um, and support. You, know, you don't have any options. I th I think that I mean this is written 2018, so very recent. But I, I think that's a little different. I, I can see how the the dad is getting some options there. Um, our son's new sense of purpose, emotional intelligence. Uh, Farrell talks a lot about. This is one way of, of um, um, kind of working towards uh, that, that boy crisis, you know, getting rid of it. And that is emotional intelligence. Teaching our kids to, you know, to um, learn empathy uh, because that will help them enter fields that are dominated by women. And, or, or be a purpose-driven dad, you know. <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of boys aren't, aren't being raised to say, oh, you know what, what's a good... A good job to have raising your kids you know it's only the most important thing us parents you know have to do because they're in the next generation you know um, I don't see what's wrong with that I mean I, I think we have to get away from that stereotype where dad works um, mom takes care of the kids dad can take care of the kids just as well um, and in the book he's <laughs> Uh, don't quote me. Uh, Pharaoh said that he said dads do a better job. Now, that's what Pharaoh said. Uh, I, I like to be in the middle there. I think both men and women have their you know strengths and weaknesses, and they they uh, they uh, they form a very good team when they come together. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> um, let's go back to entering fields that are dominated by women. All right, being in one, being a therapist, I can say that. Um, I love this field. I could do it my whole life. I can be 80 years old and do it. It's not health. It's 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 not life risking, um, depending on where you work, I guess. Um, the only thing I have to worry about is sitting too long, <laughs> uh, getting getting fat bottom syndrome. Uh, so, uh, and it's something that I, I enjoy doing. You know, I I love learning about it. Um, I can do it forever. Uh, this is my my career, but also it's something I I do as a hobby, making these videos. You know, it's all kind of connected, and it gives me purpose and meaning. So, a good point a, a good point Pharaoh makes is learning empathy, building that emotional intelligence. You know, having men enter these women dominated fields that are quite cushy. You know, um, he talked also about like um, was it like medical assistants or something like that, dental hygienist. I've never had a male dental hygienist ever. Um, I've had a male nurse, uh, veterinarians. I think those are mostly women. Um, so, getting in, you know, breaking down these 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 role barriers where men feel comfortable going into these fields. You know, why don't you pick a you know instead of a combat MOS, why don't you go pick something that's in electrical engineering? I know that electrical is kind of dangerous, but you know, probably not as dangerous as a combat MOS. I mean, it, it's probably a little bit safer. But uh, Pharaoh says you got to get these boys when they're young. You know, start letting them build that emotional intelligence, become more of a people person, so they can get people-oriented jobs that don't 
revolve a lot of, of risking their lives. Okay. So the purpose void is part three. I think, I mean, I, I feel like that's something that I feel the big problem with men and boys is purpose and meaning. We tend to fill up our lives with things that aren't going to fill that void. Video games, you know, um, I think that's maybe number one. I mean, unless you make a career out of it, but, I mean, that's like, what, a one in ten million chance or something like that to actually be successful. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, that's the purpose void. Again, I'm only touching up. I'm, I'm only touching the tip of the iceberg on these, these parts. There's a lot more information, okay, in the book. Number four, part four, dad deprived versus dad enriched boys. Uh, uh, Warren Farrell uh, says the boy crisis primary cause is dad deprived boys. Dad deprivation stems primarily from the lack of father involvement, secondary from devaluing what a father contributes when he is involved. Boys who hurt hurt others. You you read that a lot in the book, and he's so right. He's so right about that. You know, boys who hurt, hurt others. Whether it's, you know, terrorist attack, whether it's, you know, one of them school shooters, um, whether it's just, you know, um, attacking, bullying, you know, uh, being aggressive towards other people. Boys who hurt, hurt others. There's a reason they're doing that, okay? They're not just, um, you know, they're not psychologically healthy. They're, they're hurt inside. Uh, dad deprivation is the main hole in the heart of common the boys vulnerable to gangs and the boys targeted by sexual predators uh pharaoh talks about how if you know dad deprived boys tend to be targets of sexual predators you know whether it's um I, he talks about like the um like juvenile juvenile justice system with the like the ceos women ceos uh, but also they're targeted by you know pedophiles by by anybody who wants to take advantage of you know of that boy if they don't have a dad, they're much more likely to get targeted. Uh, the absence of dad creates the presence of government, uh, and that's <laughs> that's kind of a wormhole to go down. But it's true when dad's not in the home, government has to come in. They're the ones that have to um, provide where that dad um, doesn't. You know, whether it's food, shelter, um, security, you know, what have you. You know, paying for the heating bill or something like that. Government comes in, which means government grows and it becomes bigger and bigger and it becomes more involved in your life. Your life becomes more regulated and it just becomes um, uh, kind of a match made in hell, uh, you know, with government control and everything. So, uh, like, well, I guess it leads to more government spending. Um, okay. uh, so, why are dads so important? Let me count the ways. So, he goes over 14, I think there's 18, it might be more in the back of the book. School achievement. Kids do better. The three R's, verbal intelligence, math, quantitative abilities, school dropouts. Okay, Kids who have a dad involved in their lives tend to drop out of school less. They have better employment, less suicide, less drug use, less likely to be homeless, less bullying or being a bully, less likely to be victimized, less likely to commit a violent crime, rape, poverty, mobility, hypertension, trust. Okay. So if you look at the, the statistics of single mother households with no dad, they're rising everywhere. You know, uh, white, I think it's like 40%, blacks like 70%, Hispanic I think is 30, 30%, something like that. I can't remember where Hispanic is, but they're all growing. So look at these 14 ways here. And then, you know, just to extrapolate that to the millions of kids that don't have a father at home. I think it says something. I think I think Farrell is pointing out the obvious. The father warrior, why fathering will be the new male sense of purpose. Being the father warrior. I'm a dad. I love it. It's great. You do get a sense of purpose having kids. You know, you go to work. Um, like I go to work, and you know, I do it. You know, I do it because I like it. But I also do it because I know, you know, I want my kids to. You know, I don't want my kids to ever think. You know, where their next meal is coming from. Or wonder if they're gonna have a roof over their head today. You know, they do all that, um, but I do it for me. Like I'm trying to throw in that health intelligence. Um, I don't do it because I have to. Well, I kind of have to, right? <laughs> I mean, if I don't, I get them taken away, or you know, 
I, I go to jail for like child endangerment. Uh, or if I just decide to move on with my life away from these kids, you know, the government's going to be like, hey, you got to pay your uh, child support. So, um, so it is like I kind of have to, but I want to. I like to. Um, let's see here. And I don't want my kids to be, you know, experiencing any of this stuff here. So you know, I want to stay involved. And I think it's a good sense of purpose. I think it should be promoted. Um, being a father warrior, you know, it, it's a good sense of purpose. You don't have to be the sole breadwinner anymore, you know. So part five goes into more of this heroic intelligence versus health intelligence. Now, I don't know why I wrote health twice, but I did. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> the chorus, and this is from Farrell, the chorus of social brides. Remember, we got social brides from uh, women, men, uh, women, mom, dad, um, with the TV, media, and military. Uh, to prove himself is just one way a boy's heroic intelligence. What he ab absorbs about how to be heroic undermines his health intelligence. What he absorbs about how to take care of himself. A boy who tries to prove himself is at risk of losing himself. Oh, I feel pressured to go into one of those combat MOSs. Oh, I feel pressured by my peers to, I don't know, um, what are those stupid, you know, stupid things you do as a teenager, you know, when you get peer pressure, you know, whether it's like, uh, I don't know, jumping into a, you know, a gorilla's cage or something like that. I don't know. That's the first thing that caught my, um, came to my head. I don't know why. Um. I don't know, maybe it's the eve of eve the election and, you know, Harambe's on my mind. But, um, you know, all that stupid stuff we get pressured into doing because, oh, you know, you're not man enough or what are you, chicken? Oh, you wussy. And we want people to think we're not. We don't think we're men, right? We want we're big and strong and we can handle ourselves, especially the women like that. You know, we want to impress them and get their favor. Um, but that's heroic intelligence, you know. We're beyond that. We, we've, we've evolved. Right? Or at least our society has. Men still haven't. We gotta we gotta start getting this. Uh, when we've seen how virtually every society has survived, did so by preparing its son to be disposable, disposable in war and disposable at work. This prepares us to unconsciously undermine our son's, son's health in three ways. Um, and I'll go all those ways in a second. One example he gave was construction of a house. Okay. I sit in a house here, built in 1900, um, but I can't imagine all the work, the electricity, you know, the roofing, you know, how much, how much energy and and um, work went into building this house. I mean, this is a house before they had, you know, um, cookie cutter um, building. You know, they did all the stuff by hand. Um, like how much work that went like nobody really thinks about when they drive on a road how much of a man's health went into building that road or that bridge um, maybe he had to um, you know one of the man's having pain in his back and he goes and drinks himself silly just because he can't deal with the pain you know no one really thinks about the sacrifice the men have done to build that stuff you know you don't see women building bridges you know, doing construction, building high rises, you know, you know, you, you don't think about, you know, how many men put their lives at risk building that thing for us, you know, um, and, and this is why, you know, we kind of don't think about that. It's just kind of ingrained in ourselves to uh, our psyches, you know, our scheme or whatever you want to call it. Um, that's just the way things are. This is what men are for. Disposable, dispen um, uh, um, what's the other word? <laughs> I just had it, I can't think of it now. Mm. Oh well. Uh, so uh, three ways we unconsciously undermine our sons. One, teaching our son to be sensitive to his health is in competition with your survival instinct. You wanna survive, don't think about your health. That's the last thing you should be thinking about. You should be thinking about society and how to how to prevent uh, you know something bad happening to it. You know, put yourself in the way of a moving truck to save. Well, I would save my child. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know what? You know what I'm saying? It's it's don't think about your health. 
think about the job first, you know. Number two, if you fear you may lose your son, it helps to unconsciously protect yourself from forming a deep, uh, I'm sorry, forming too deep a psychological attachment. This can deprive your son of the health benefits of being picked up and held when he cries, thus depriving him of the emotional security that expressing his feelings will attract empathy and, and intimacy. Okay, so unconsciously, you know, we're, 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 we're doing it at a young age with these boys. Oh, man up, toughen up, stiffen up that upper lip, brush it off, be a man. You know, you, you, you say these things to these boys uh, because you're trying to tell him he needs to be tough, that he has to weather through, you know. We're not thinking about the, the, uh, the damage it's doing because he's starting to think that he's probably um, maybe not worth the uh, emotional security. Or that his health doesn't matter. Number three, you want to raise a son who can respect himself and be respected. As, as well as a son you can be proud of for raising. So you cheer for him at sports, uh, at sports in your community. I'm sorry. You cheer for him at sports. Your community cheers for him. For that, put him at risk. Ugh, I messed that all up. <laughs> that whole sentence up. Uh, so football, lacrosse, wrestling, ice hockey, you know, these are all sports. And he talks about CTE um, and the, uh, the brain damage that happens to players that play a long time. You know, as a parent, you're, you're, you're not thinking about your son's health when he plays football, when he gets tackled, or, or when he does the tackling. You're just rooting him on. You're not wondering what's going on you know, inside his brain. Did he have a concussion? You know, one of his, you know going to have joint pain when he grows older. Um, so we just kind of, you know, um, not really think about that. It's unconscious. Becoming a man, this is at the bottom, is associated with power. But once we teach our sons to not cry, he learns to be ashamed of his feelings and therefore of his nature. That shame undermines his health. When a boy learns to both undermine his health and psychologically distance himself from himself, he doesn't have real power. He is a hero without himself. Okay, so heroic intelligence. You know, it's, you're, you're not being your true self. You know, you're, you're putting society's uh, health above your own. Okay, because you're feeling compelled to. It's not a conscious choice you're making. Number six, part six, ADHD. Treatment with or without medication. Um, so Dr. Farrell uh, said in his book he has or had ADHD as a child. Um, he also had early onset Parkinson's, I think he said. Um, and the, the mainly the mainly the part of the book he talks about inhibited dopamine function. Uh, and I'm going to read a quote from him. It says, "When dopamine is inhibited, we experience lack of focus, interest, motivation, or pleasure in response to normal." And healthy life experiences with reduced dopamine function in order to feel good we become dependent on more intense experiences to stimulate higher levels of dopamine production in the absence of more intense experiences a boy begins feeling bored restless impulsive distracted or distressed ADHD right I you know I, I, I can't remember the number but he's you know Pharaoh points out how boys are just on the rise with ADHD it's crazy how much ADHD, you know, is it really ADHD? You know, is it conduct, uh, conduct disorder? Um, all I know is, you know, they got to go to school, they got to learn, and they're not able to learn, so we need to find something to help them. You know, most of the time it's medication because that's easy, right? It's cheap, easy. Parents can go back to living their lives. They don't have to do anything different. Um, and, and that's a shame because really when you have a disorder like ADHD, medication is only half the battle. You also have, and Dr. Farrell talks about diet, exercise, vitamin and minerals, monitor game, uh, video game use. So video game use is really important. How much dopamine does somebody, maybe a, a kid, um, you know, lets out when he plays a video game. You know, video games are purposely um, addicting because they want you to continue playing. So they put all these different ways of you getting dopamine rushes. You know, 
And they're ma- I think they're mainly made for adults, but kids pick up on them and they play them. So, uh, but he did a whole part on ADHD. He did a lot about the different vitamins and minerals he recommends. He put a lot of different diets that exist that help with it. Um, he talked about how he cured himself of ADHD. So it was a good part. Um, so if, if you have a child with ADHD, might be something you want to look into reading his books. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm, I myself, I, I think medication and lifestyle changes is the best form of treatment for ADHD. Uh, and I think Farrell would probably agree with that, even though his book really seemed to be more non-medicated. So. But a lot of good information uh, in that in that part about ADHD. Conclusion on the boy crisis. I think this book is for everyone. You know, even if you're not a parent, if you're a therapist working with youth, you have no kids, you could benefit from this book. Okay, uh, and, and it will really build benefit anyone from reading it. I think it helped people become more aware of what's going on. Um, a good uh, section of the book he talked about how if you are getting a divorce what is the best way what's the healthiest way psychologically to get a divorce for your kids you know some of the rules were like living close by um, not talking about each other in front of the kids that type of thing Um, so this book has a lot of different uses and it could benefit anyone who reads it in my opinion Overall, the, the boy crisis, main causes, dad deprivation, purpose void, heroic intelligence, and social bribes. What I like, I like that it gives facts, and there's a ton of references in the back to, uh, to back up his statements in the book. He's not just putting his thoughts, his ideas. It's backed up by a ton of research and references. Uh, brings uh, these issues and problems of boys and men to the public. Again, if it's something that's unconscious, how are people going to know what it is? I didn't even know what it was. And I agree that there is this kind of shade we put over our eyes uh, when we see, oh, 94% of workplace death are men. You know, okay, well, that's what they're there for. <laughs> you know, they're, they're just, you know, um, expendable. You know? Um, so I'm, I'm glad he wrote this book. It, it does... It does present the problems. Uh, gives alternatives to help boys become liberated. It's Farrell. I like I like what he did in the book because he's not just saying, "Oh, we need to go back to the '50s and '40s and put men, uh, put put women back in the households." You know, boys don't have any purpose. We need to get get the way things were. He doesn't say all that. Women are liberated. Men are not. We need to work on men getting liberated as well. You know, so he gives a lot of different ways to help. One of the ways I talked about was uh, emotional intelligence. Getting kids, more, getting boys more connected with their emotions and feelings and knowing how to deal with them instead of lashing out, instead of internalizing them. Okay. Provides tools to help reverse the boy crisis um, and it is very comprehensive with identifying the boy crisis. It's a 400 page book. And there's a lot of information. Again, I touched the tip of the iceberg on this book. There's so much more in it, and I would recommend getting it. Um, if you have a boy, a son, if you have a son with ADHD, um, if, if you have a, a nephew, anybody could benefit from this book. And so I would recommend it. And I think that's it. So I will stop there. I thank you for watching my show. Please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, go check out The Boy Crisis. It, you know, pick it up on Amazon for, I think I bought mine for, I want to say $12. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's worth the read. Okay, I recommend it. So you have a good night. Thanks for watching. And take care. Bye.